cloud. I think. Cloud. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. It is Sunday, October 26, 915. Zooming uh, live from Church of the Holy Trinity in Vicksburg, um, a river friendly faith community that's been thriving for 151 years. Um, Glad that you're joining with us. We have a crowd assembled uh, today uh, offering up uh, a, a, a big pass. And I got a feeling um, people are going to catch it for uh, the hidden spirituality of, of women. I've gathered uh, friends who I know, and it's a it's a interstate crowd. Uh, I like that. I like that. Now, actually, our panel today is all from Mississippi, so that, that makes it strong. Friends I've known along uh, the way, and uh, uh, so uh, our hope today is just to let them talk, because as a man, <laughs> whew, have you ever heard of mansplaining? Is that, is that? I'm or two. <laughs> <laughs> I've witnessed it a couple of times. Witnessed it, experienced it. We're so grateful for you all. I would like to begin uh, with the prayer, and then uh, we'll set up the, the flow. Uh, and and when we talk, let's introduce ourselves. And that also goes for for you all as well. Okay. So the Lord be with you. Yeah. And also, also with, you. with you. Let's pray. Gracious God, you magnificently made us in your image and after you saw what you've done you smiled and you said it was good and we claim it today for uh, the strength of being a human being especially uh, being a woman let our conversations today uh, spark something may we circle back to this morning in the future and let it fill us with refreshment and delight. May seeds be planted that in the future we'll see and it'll help us smile uh, in realization of your extra goodness. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Hey, so uh, again, welcome everybody. Can we do a, a sound check? Are y'all hearing us out there? Yes. Great. Okay, good, good, good. For, for the sake of it, if, if you aren't speaking, if you wouldn't mind just putting yourself on mute, we are a recording, and we have a, a group here as well. All right, all right, Church of the Holy Trinity. I get to serve in an awesome place, you all, uh, and every Sunday morning, uh, sparks fly, and so uh, 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 we're very excited about this. I've asked the, the group uh, to introduce themselves and just answer a question how did they get to here? Um, that was that was the question, right, y'all? How did you get to this moment? L L Loretta, who's in the middle of our screen when we were talking, mentioned it. They said that was a great starter. So, um, panel, how did you get to here? Three to five minutes, each of you. Uh, we look forward to listening. And after uh, everyone goes, well, hopefully we can ask you questions, okay? Thanks. Whoever wants to go first. We didn't plan that out, did we? We didn't plan who was going to go first. I'll go. Sandy. I'll go. Sandy. And I also know right. you all have some time constraints because you work on Sunday. That's the only day of the week you work. So, uh, okay, go, Sandy. I will be I'll be glad to give my time to someone who needs to leave early. Marion? Robert's rules. Very, very male. All right, Marion. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Thank y'all. And I'm going to try to stay as long as I can because I, I, I love this. I just think this is really neat. Um, hello, Holy Trinity. Um, thank you for having us here. Um, I invited, I'm at Christ Episcopal Church, and that is in Bay St. Louis on the beautiful Gulf Coast, and I'm really, really enjoying my time down here and, uh, the, and the people, and this is just really cool that we can get together this way. Um, there's Lindsay. You're coming to do coffee hour, right? Oh, 
<laughs> You're not here for this. <laughs> okay, all right, I digress. Um, um, what has brought me to this place? Um, I'm gonna start with the word tradition because um, when I think about where I am right now, um, the richness of what I experience in my faith life and my, my ordinary spirituality um, is deeply steeped in the Episcopal tradition. And I'm, def I'm so grateful to people um, who gave that to me and offered it to me in a way that I could receive it as a child. And I grew up in the Episcopal church. My parents did as well. And I was fed at the altar of um, Epiphany Episcopal Church in Tunica, Mississippi. Small church, wonderful church, uh, deep sense of family with everybody um, gathering before Sunday school to sing hymns. And I just felt like I was part of this really big, wonderful family. In addition to my big, wonderful family, which was five kids. And we, we get to church every Sunday. I don't know how my parents did it, but we squeezed into the row. And I just have, I have real tactile memories of my mother's um, scratchy wool coat, um, my father's off key singing, really off key and him <laughs> whispering to us sing sing I can't sing but I want y'all to sing so I grew up with with some of those hymns um I sing a song of the saints of God was formative for me I really wanted to be one too um looking at the stained glass window over the altar it, it was a it's a depiction of Jesus with um gathering the children let the children come so as a child, I always felt like I, I had a place that I belonged. So, um, and I suppose I, as I reflected on this, if I had any deficiency at all uh, in, in that formation, it was having little to no instruction on how to read the Bible. <laughs> That's, that's pretty common sometimes in the Episcopal church. I certainly he uh, heard the stories, the parables in Sunday school and classes, but um, as a teenager, I did my best to read it. I had the red letters and uh, that's what I would go to. Uh, as a college student, I used to just let it flop open and read what was there. And one day it flipped to the first page. So I said, okay, God, um, and I did it two chapters a day, and that took about two years, and it was during that time, although I didn't understand the threads that you understand later in life, I did pick up very short um, passages that I've carried with me for a while, and one is Proverbs 3, uh, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways and he shall direct your path. So when I'm wondering and wandering, and I actually did it in needlepoint. Can you believe that? I guess that's reversed, but. Um, we see it. What, what is it again? It's Psalm. It's, it's Proverbs. Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6. And uh, it's for a seeker like me. Um, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths. So that is a verse I go back to often. Um, another one that, that, I, that I grabbed onto was Micah 6, 8. And what has the Lord required of you, but, O oh man, but to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God? Um, so those are a few things that have brought me to this place. Um, and I think I can stop there. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As, as we're listening to you all answer the question, what got you to this day? I hope all of us are, are thinking, I, what got us to this day. We made it. We made it all somehow or another. What got us to this day? Thank you, Marion. Awesome person. Okay, Liz. 
you, 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 you got the mute. There we go. There we go. Hi, everybody. I'm Liz Goodyear Jones, and I um, live on the coast in Long Beach, Mississippi. How, what has brought me to this day? Obviously, it, it, God, first of all, for all of us, but it was 1952. It was August of 1952, and I lived in Jackson, Mississippi, in a little community called Bellhaven, and my grandmother and I walked over to Bailey Junior High Stadium to see this evangelist named Billy Graham. And we sat in the football stands that evening. And my family, my, I, I started life as a Methodist. So there's, I am a Methalian. There's, there's much of Methodism in me. And I, I love that and honor it, as well as my devotion to Episcop being an Episcopalian as well. Anyway, what my family and I were sitting up way up in the stands and my grandmother and mother were talking. And I have no idea what Billy Graham said, what the words were, but I will never forget the feeling in myself. And I, I just burst out and said, I knew it was true. <clears throat> and they had an altar call and I, I mean, I just leapt up and ran down there. And here's this little girl by herself, six years old, black hair, straight across bangs, looked like Prince Valiant. And um, the, I remember whoever it was said to me, why are you here? And I said, well, you said to come down. <laughs> <laughs> so they just kind of fumbled around a little bit and said a few prayers. and gave me some things and sent me back to my seat, to my family. But as we walked home that night on Euclid to our house on Fairview, I was holding my grandmother's hand and I said to her grandmother, I want the whole world to know this. And she looked down at me and said, of course. But it was my decisive moment. Now, my ship sailed many waters before <laughs> it, it, it made the true and narrow path, of, uh, which I'm still on, of finding, seeking, finding, and loving God and sharing that with the world. I've been a priest for about, I think, 35 years, 36 years, something like that, and um, had the privilege of mostly working in Mississippi. I started out in California, in San Francisco, uh, but, um, but Mississippi for most, for most of my journey. The words that for me continue to resonate are in the 8 a.m. service. So those of you at High Holy Trinity, thank you all for having us. Um, if you're the eight o'clock service, uh, our what we say, I say every Sunday, every Sunday that I preach, because I'm retired now. Um, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and soul and strength, mm. and your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and all the prophets. And of course, the law is the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And the prophets make up just about the rest of the Old Testament in the, in the Jewish Testament, um, uh, our Old Testament. Those, that commandment seems to incorporate everything that I know and love about God that I shall love. I, in other words, I can. I, I'm not asking for the ability to love. I have it. And it, it, and it's the first person I am to love is the person we're to surrender to, who is God as I understand God in Jesus. And the uh, next person or in this circle is uh, our neighbor and ourselves. And I think like being on the airplane and the airplane starts down and the ex oxygen drops and they tell you, don't put it on your child first, put it on yourself. 
so that you can then give to the community or you can, can give to those who need. That's, that's to me paramount. So, um, thank you. It, mm -hmm, thank Good. you. What got you to this day? What got you to this day? Good morning. Loretta. My name is Loretta Hewlett. And thank you, Holy Trinity, for allowing us to participate with you this morning. I am in Philadelphia, and I'm coming from the mission of St. Francis of Assisi. I'm delighted to be here and to participate in this question because it did give me a chance to reflect back on what's gotten me to this day. Well, first of all, my, my just physical being here reminds you that I am the product of many generations of people who came over the Middle Passage from Africa to America in the 1600s, and they survived. They were also enslaved until the 1800s, and they survived and thrived. They, th they survived and thrived through slavery, Reconstruction, World Wars, Jim Crow laws, the Great Depression, and the pandemic of 1918. They survived and they thrived. I exist here talking to you today because they survived and thrived. And my mantra has always been to honor them by regardless of what the situation I'm placed in, I will survive and I will thrive. And I've had many of those opportunities. And in order for me to do what I needed to do each day, I had three things that I went to in order to get me through that day. The first one was when I woke up in the morning with prayer. Prayer that I am still here and, and am blessed to be here. And I would have many conversations throughout the day based on what I needed to do. And as I went along the day doing chores, uh, when I was in my professional life, getting ready as a mother, getting my children ready. And um, when I needed some guidance in order for me to get through the day, I also had a poem uh, by Langston Hughes and it's called A Mother to a to his to her son and then lastly i had a go-to psalm 121 lift up my eyes unto the hill from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the lord the maker of heaven and earth i like to share this poem because it will allow me to share a personal side and langston hughes was a renaissance uh, poet he was also wrote a lot of literature during that period of time. But this one just resonates with me when I'm ready to give up. So let me read it to you. It's called From a Mother to a Son. Life for me has, ain't been no crystal stairs. It's had tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up and places with no carpet on the floor, bare. But all the time I've been climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there has been no light. So boy, don't you turn back. Don't you sit down on the stairs because you find it kind of hard. Don't you fall now. I's going, I's still going, honey. I's still climbing and life for me ain't been no crystal stairs. My 75 years of being on this earth has had its share of joy, jubilation, and celebrations, as well as challenges, disappointments, personal sickness, three times a cancer survivor thriver, crisis of faith, along with the undercurrents of racial discrimination. But when I needed help, my faith instilled in me at a very young age by my grandmother, and new to it over time, which brings you back time and time again to Psalms 121. And as I paraphrase from what, from whence cometh my help, the help of the Lord will not suffer my foot to be moved. 
as I climb upward. He is my keeper. He is my preserver from this time forth and forevermore. Thank you. That's Loretta. Philadelphia, Mississippi, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad I'm your friend. What got you? <clears throat> hello. Hey, hello, hey. Holy Trinity. Um, hello, my Vicksburg friends. You know, I am a former Vicksburger. I hope you know that. And it's good to be here with you. When Andy first called and uh, text, emailed me and asked me to be a part of this, I was very reluctant. Um, I've never, I do a lot of talking, but I hadn't talked about my spirituality. That, that felt really threatening to me. Mm. But then I remembered that just weeks before, I had said to a relative very loudly and, and, and with feeling, I am a spiritual person. I'm not sure I'd ever said that out loud to anybody or with that kind of force behind it. But if you knew my brother, you'd kind of know why. Um, with that memory, though, I settled in with the notion that if I participated in this group, it would have to be about my own spirituality as I am coming to understand it. And I warn you, uh, as, as I talk today, it's about my spiritual journey. I don't know enough, nor do I feel qualified to speak about spirituality in a general sense. The next thing I thought about was fear, the hidden nature of spirituality. My hidden nature is all about fear. For certain people in my life would not regard spirituality as a real thing. I was fearful that I would lose credibility with people in my life if I were to acknowledge spirituality, this thing that is neither tangible nor verifiable. And just as quickly, I also thought about <clears throat> having read <clears throat> something that Albert Einstein had said. He said, was quoted as saying, there was something deeply hidden that had to be behind things. So if that great scientist, um, possible non-believer, could admit to these hidden things, why well, couldn't little old me speak about my hidden spirituality? So here I am. <laughs> um, I grew up with grandmothers in Vicksburg, Annie, the Baptist, and Lizzie, the Episcopalian. And carrying both their names, Anita Elizabeth's path of spirituality was probably known and nurtured by these grandmothers long before she discovered it herself. I call my Grammys Danda and Dear. Music was always a huge part of our prayer and worship. And <clears throat> at St. Mary's, our brick church, we sang from our hymnals, in Christ there is no east or west, or the church's one foundation. And then there were those spoken words in that little church that we learned first and foremost, that Jesus was the propitiation of our sins. <laughs> propitiation, I love that word. And, and, and so many others that gave me assurance and never to be forgotten were the words, therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify that glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying. Oh, oh. Our prayers, hopes, and spiritual lives were formed through the reciting of so many of these beautiful words. But across town at Holly Grove, the little wooden building those long meter hymns, Guide Me, O Thy Great Jehovah, and so many Negro spirituals, one after the other, were called out and sung with such spontaneity and, and harmony. I just knew that my prayers in that place took wings and rested on those sweet humming chords, steal away, steal away to Jesus. Out at Holly Grove, there were many different prayers without books, 
prayers written in the blood, sweat, and and pain of God's oppressed black people, living and dead, prayers from their joys, their souls, their ancestors. I learned to moan, sing, grieve, and pray with them for us all. And so my spirituality was drawn, spawned from these elders, their music, and our churches in their very different ways. All of this was captured and overseen by my parents in our nightly, now I lay me down to sleep. They live in me to this day. Thank you, Anita. Thank you. I'm so glad I'm your friend. <laughs> it's mutual, Andy. <laughs> I'm glad to be friends with all of you. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Kimmelman, up there in South Haven, Mississippi, at the top of the state. The top. What got you to this day? I had to unmute myself. Thank you for time. Um, what got me to this day... Um, I, I, in thinking over that question, I wondered about women, and I wondered about the hidden spirituality, and I uh, I, I began to remember things that I had seen women do in the quiet, and I saw I I I, I heard women talk of how their respect for nature brought them to a quiet place, uh, how their respect for literature, for scripture, for poetry, and for crafts, all were a, a part of where they found that peace. Before we started today, I listened to uh, a song called Peace and just quieted myself. Um, th those are the places that we, we take in a personal way to a quietness. Um, one of the things that uh, in, I found while I was looking around for, for uh, women speaking about spirituality was in uh, Madeline Langle's Glimpses of Grace. In March, she uses these words, when I need a dose of wonder, I wait for a clear night and go look for the stars. In the city, I see only a few, but only a few are needed. In the country, the great river of the Milky Way streams across the sky. And I know that our planet is a small part of that river of stars. And my pain of separation is healed. This aster makes me think of disgrace, often the wonder of the stars is enough to return me to God's loving grace, a spirituality found in the skies. And I think that in all the different ways that I've named the crafts, the poetry, the scripture, all of those things are part of how women seem to find uh, that, that which is within. Throughout my life, I have found, uh, I look back and I, and I have found that connection, connection with others has been a great part of my spirituality. Yes, I go to that quiet place. You can see that I have a singing bowl up here. I use my singing bowl quite often. But connection with others takes me to a place where then I can process with a singing bowl, with music, with whatever it is that I use at the moment. First of all, I had sisters. They were older and I was able as a younger, as much as five and eight years younger, I was able to watch, observe and see them. And I found in them care, comfort, I found understanding and acceptance. And in that, I found that interaction was a great part of their spirituality. So 
later on, I, I, I grew up Catholic. And so I looked at the nuns that I came in contact with and saw them giving and out in the world, touching, being with others, um, that their availability to others was a great inspiration. And I found that their active seeking of others was an inspiration to me. And in friendships, um, I heard Loretta talk about thriving and surviving. And I think that friendship does that, especially women together, <laughs> reaching out to each other, talking and chit-chatting. We spoke earlier about chit-chatting uh, in, in just a um, casual manner. That chit chat brings to surface not only the mundane that is so important to us, but also that which is um, deep, that which is special. Um, and in that experience of sharing, there comes uh, a change my granddaughter, who's only 26, explained to me recently that, um, well, she, when I asked her where she found her spirituality, she said to me, human interference can evolve spirituality. <laughs> and I was, I said, oh, you have to tell me more. <laughs> and then she, <laughs> then she began to speak to me of quantum entanglement, a theory that when, a, um, when something is imposed on two different objects, um, when the same imposition occurs on those two objects, there is an exchange of real matter and they become somewhat of each other. And I go back to the chit chat and I go back to <clears throat> the observation, the realness of each other. And then I find myself in the gospels listening to the story of Christ and every step he took was uh, to be touched or to touch. He mixed dirt and clay and spittle and touched another's eyes. He allowed a woman to touch him, even though she was the determining factor there. He allowed a woman to touch him. And that touch has been what, where I find my spirituality. This gathering is where I find spirituality. That we touch each other is so important. I'm glad I'm your friend, Sandy Kimmelman. And I yours. Thank you. All right, so uh, uh, you can tell we're just winging this whole experience. I mean, I've, I've asked them to tell a question, and this is round one. We're going to circle on round two. Um, I have two older sisters uh, who really nurtured me. I mean, they locked me in the closet a, a few times. And, <laughs> and um, Thank goodness. <laughs> tickled me uh, in the front yard where I couldn't uh, contain myself, but um, uh, it was a nurturing, I recognize a feminine strength. Also in my mother, um, I recognize a strength that I know I don't have, I don't see it uh, in other uh, men in my family. Living with Ann Andrews, I see a strength um, being a, a, in, the, in the church, I see a hidden spirituality with women that men just don't have. I think it's the reason Jesus showed up to Mary Magdalene first and not to one of the, the disciples they might have gotten, or to one of the men they might have gotten distracted playing golf or something. <laughs> so uh, so uh, the hidden spirituality of women, especially knowing that we live still in a male dominated world um, 
Anita and Loretta t t talking about uh, being a person of color, that other layer of, of oppression, hidden spirits. How, how, how did you get here with that, the, the, the feminine? And if any of y'all want to jump in, I'm open. Super open. I've got to jump out real soon. Um, yeah, Marion, you all dressed up your vestments. <laughs> yeah, getting dressed as we speak. Um, but this is this is so enriching for me to hear just the different um, voices around this table. And I wish everybody in the room could be speaking and how powerful. But I, I was going to share... Um, I've tried different things through the years and, and, and some of them have um, been really, hey Denise, um, really meaningful. And I think they, they kind of layer for me, but I've circled back around this summer. I had three months off and I circled back to my, one of my first loves, which was cruel um, when I was cruel, 13 or 14, <laughs> I am sometimes. Um, my mother um, got me started with this and it got me through the angst of my teenage years and I kept going until I couldn't find any cruel anymore and had to do counted cross stitch which nearly put my eyes out but <laughs> lately I've gone back um, I went online and I found um, a company in England that makes um, cruel products but yeah they put the pattern on there and and so this is an epiphany um alter frontal i don't i tell you what let me do this right here that's what it will look like and um and y'all it's been so calming and I've, it's been meditative so when i'm was doing the roof which is what i started with i began meditating about um shelter and the homeless and um providing hospitality and then i moved to the the sort of knights templar um yeah with the crinoline roof um i've got one of my members here thank goodness um commenting and, and joining me and um so go. i'm i'm thinking that when i get to advent i'll be working on mary and Jesus and possibly Joseph and luckily epiphany season is eight weeks this year so I might just finish the kings but um this was a wall hanging this was an altar hanging it traveled in catholic churches from what I understand in the 1600s and it's it's um crudely drawn so that it's okay if I mess up and um and I've learned um, the other day when we were preparing, Andy said that embroidery is sometimes used for, for helping with trauma because it, it helps a person be mindful and focus. And on this website, they have a blog and they talked about using embroidery with soldiers, World War I soldiers to help them when they were shell-shocked because it, it shifts the, um, the adrenaline or something, um, the, the stress hormone, it, it drops it. And they found that to be very effective. So while this is often um, a very feminine um, you know, endeavor, um, there are men who find it beneficial to them, them as well, so. And now I've got to run. I, I'm glad it's being recorded. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, we have about five more minutes ourselves, and then we'll wrap up. Have a great Sunday. Thank you, Mary, and all, all you down on the coast. Awesome. Uh, hidden spirituality, hidden strength. Any of y'all out here in Vicksburg land? Carol, tell me if, if, if y'all can hear Carol. She's so wise. So, uh. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think as a woman giving birth and participating in that miracle absolutely has to 
spark of spirituality. Yes, yes, yes. As a man, I've wanted to experience that. I don't think I've wanted to experience other things, but it, it seems like it's a, it's a real, it's a, it's a miracle that happens in you. And you know, you didn't do it alone, obviously. You didn't do it alone. You didn't do it alone. Thank you. Not only just the birth, but the whole process of pregnancy. Right. Yes. You know, it's just such a miracle. Hidden strength, hidden spirituality. Are you, know, you asking us, Andy? Um, yeah, you know, what you got? <laughs> Thank well, you. I, I'm just with the time frame. I'm, I just yeah. want to 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 try to say something really quickly here, okay. but I shared with you when we were in preparation about my experience of hearing in a Baptist church, this beautiful song, A Quiet Place. And um, it was just a beautiful coloratura soprano with the choir backing her up. And it was a song written by James Cleveland, the, the Baptist preacher. And um, it's just so lovely. It's been a part of my life for so long. And then years, years later, I'm driving up Highway 25 going home to Starkville. And I hear this wonderful melody on, on, <clears throat> on the public radio. And it's the music to A Quiet Place, just lovely. And then the announcer said, you have just been listening to Opus 39, number 15 by uh, Johann Brahms. And I said, no, 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 that's, that's quiet place. <laughs> well, anyway, <clears throat> it's lovely. And I've, I, I just sort of summarized that whole thing uh, to say, I can imagine James Cleveland was excited about Brahms music, just as I am. I can even believe that seamlessly he attached his soul for prayers to Brahms' music. That day when I heard that music, I was, my grandmother's Baptist and Episcopal were one. Uh, Brahms and Cleveland were one, blended in song. And we were all one in the presence of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's a quiet place where I can talk to the Lord. There's a quiet place where I can listen to his voice. It's close by, not far away. He will hear us when we pray. And that quiet place is hidden in my heart. Those were Cleveland's words put to Brahms music. That sustains me, it has sustained me, it continues to sustain me. And you might hear me humming it in times of trouble as well as times of joy. That's all I have to say about that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, um, in, in Mark um, 11, the 25th verse, Jesus says, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you've hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and you've re revealed them to infants, yes. Uh, for such is your gracious will. Um, I've heard a lot of things that you all have said today, things that are inside you. Um, uh, words, prayers, thoughts, but uh, you, you go to the well that is inside and you let it be a fountain. And you all are fountains. You are not drains. You all are, are fountains uh, uh, of eternal water. Thank you for your time today. Um, I, I would love to challenge this whole group again to come back and be with us next Sunday. It's the hidden spirituality of men. <laughs> um, and, and, and they said it may only last five minutes. <laughs> But, but hopefully, uh, Charles Smith is a, a friend of mine. Um, he's going to be on the panel along with uh, four other folks as we 
Do, we, we were led well today. Thank you, Loretta and Sandy and Anita, and also uh, for Liz and Marion for being great leaders and putting yourself out there. Your words have blessed us today. So can we just pause for a minute before we uh, get released? Lord, help the words we hear here today become crystallized. Let us know that we are spiritual people. Let us know that there's a well inside each of us. Let us honor your creation, the masculine and the feminine. Let us know that in each of us is a microcosm of your universe. Let us enjoy that complexity and feel blessed by it. Trusting you, knowing that you smile and you love it. In Christ's name, everybody on Zoom say amen. 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 Uh, amen. Everybody in the Holy Trinity say amen. Amen. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Go in peace. Thanks again, Andy, for everything. Oh, go in peace. Go in peace. <laughs> to love and to serve the Lord. Oh. <laughs> amen. Great day, y'all. Thank you. Good job. Wow.